In today's video, we are going to be looking at some big news for the planet, some big news for space exploration, some big news for electric vehicles, and some of the smallest news ever recorded by man. I'm Zach, this here is Zach DTV, and to start with, let's look at the small stuff. Researchers from the University of Nottingham, as well as University of Ulm, have recorded the smallest interaction ever put on, not film, digital, but ever recorded by man. What we're looking at in this video is two atoms of rhenium dancing around each other and forming an atomic bond. What we're seeing here is half of a million times smaller than a human hair. The, the scale is just kind of unfathomable unless you work with this stuff. But this is the actual bonding and breaking of that bond that makes up everything in the universe. We wouldn't be here without that interaction. And for the first time ever, they caught it on an SD card. How cool is that? And I'll tell you what, let's move from that into some great news for our, our Mother Earth. China has announced that it will be banning all single-use plastic. They've announced that by the end of 2020, they will have banned the use of all single-use plastic bags in major cities. This right here was one of the most shocking images of the single-use plastic bag I ever saw, by the way. That is the bottom of the Marianas Trench. And there it is floating along like some unobserved fish. How sad is that? They've also stated that by the end of 2022, all cities and towns will have no more single-use plastic bags in them. And the only thing they will allow is for markets that are selling fresh products. They are exempt until 2025. They've got five years to change how they package their items. In this release, they also stated that by year's end, the hospitality industries, restaurants, that kind of stuff, will quit using uh, single-use plastic straws. And... By the end of 2025, hotels will no longer offer single-use plastic items like cups, disposable air, wash bottles, things like that. And all other plastic uses will have to be reduced by 30%. When you take into account that China is the world's largest producer of plastic pollutions, this is going to be a giant, giant help in combating the, just the amount of rampant plastic waste we have around the world. Um, maybe when we see things like this happening in the Asian countries, we will actually see some movement forward in cleaning up these uh, giant garbage patches we have out in our oceans. That's yeah, pretty big news, and uh, I think it'll go a long way to helping out our planet. While we're talking about big positive changes for the environment, let's bring up how Arrival an electric vehicle company with their main offices in UK has partnered with Hyundai. Yep, Hyundai, the gigantic manufacturer from Korea. Uh, and by the way, I didn't know this. These people manufacture everything. They make oil rigs, they make cars, they make tanker ships, they make all sorts of stuff. One I thought was pretty funny though is here is Hyundai's department store that's right Hyundai has a department store and it's the third largest in Korea and they also have subsidiary businesses called Hyundai home shopping and hotel Hyundai yep we here in America just know you for your cars you you guys are really doing it big though um, I'm gonna link to their Wikipedia so you can see everything Hyundai has their fingers in now arrival is an electric car company like I said out of the UK and they base their products on, I don't know if you've ever seen this skateboard technique. Basically, they build everything as a skateboard and you put different uh, modular pieces on top. Hyundai bought in with them is they wanted a piece of uh, what they're calling devices on wheels. Uh, they're designed to be assembled in a small footprint and sold for the same price as a normal car. The beauty of this though, is that this UK startup now they've partnered with Hyundai. This will allow Hyundai to use Arrival's existing technology to bring their electric cars to market. And when you have a manufacturer as large as Hyundai, 
building electric cars, they're going to make it to market with these. These are going to be on the road, and I bet you they're going to be on the road pretty quickly. And uh, I think that would be great. They say their main focus right now is going to be attacking the commercial vehicle sector, and they want to remove diesel vehicles from the road and get them replaced with these more environmentally friendly uh, vehicles that run on electricity. So far, everything's been pretty good for the planet. Um, I'll tell you what, this one, this next story that I'm going to cover was just odd to me. We have a lot of talk here recently about facial recognition, the AI involved in scanning people's faces and identifying them in a crowd. Um, we've even had uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez made a statement about being uh, that we need to monitor our facial recognition programs more. We need to be uh, more wary of how we use them. Well, facial recognition is one way that an algorithm can detect you. Uh, researchers in Finland, I am not going to try to pronounce the name of this university because there's way too many consonants in it for me, have used motion capture. And what they're trying to do was train an algorithm to detect different styles of dance for different musics. Like, it'd watch somebody dance and go, oh, they're listening to reggae or they're listening to pop, rock, whatever. Well, the only thing it was able to identify that way reliably was metal. When it came down to the rest of the dance moves, everything seemed to be pretty much the same, I guess. However, out of 73 volunteers, it was able to detect who was dancing 94% of the time no matter what music they are dancing to what style of dance they are doing it was able to track a person's motion and uniquely pin it to a person 94% of the time that's crazy right I thought it was just goofy so we don't have to just worry about facial recognition you know and I know there's people out there oh wear masks you can get around facial recognition how do you get around something that can monitor the way you dance? I mean, obviously, don't dance. But there was also uh, some research that came out in 2017 that showed that even the way you walk, your gait can be monitored. I believe they did something like that in uh, one of those Mission Impossibles, didn't they? Oh boy, here we go. It will be an interesting future. And, you know, for my final bit of news here, this one was just pretty cool. This is coming out of the European uh, Space Agency, the ESA. And they have come up with a process where they are able to take regolith, moon dirt, moon dust, and extract oxygen out of it. The thing is, there's not a lot of free oxygen orbiting the moon. There's not really any. So... Oxygen is one of those things we kind of need in order to live, and we need to be off-planet. But you can only carry so much, right? Uh, compressed oxygen is heavy. Well, they've come to find that in the regolith on the moon, there is a lot of oxygen. It's held in rust. It's oxidation. Well, what they have done is come up with a prototype oxygen plant that can extract the oxygen from the regolith. What they're using is a calcium chloride salt molten. It's heated up to 1,742 degrees Fahrenheit, 950 Celsius for everyone else in the world. And uh, you pump the regolith in, they hit it with a little electricity, and they can extract the oxygen out of it to be stored in a tank and used as breathable oxygen. The waste product looks like this, and it's just metal. So there may even be uses for that. Now, we're going to have to get into all sorts of different technology to make that usable. But it is there. But like Beth Lomax said, one of the researchers on this project, being able to acquire oxygen from resources found on the moon would obviously be hugely useful for future lunar settlers, both for breathing and the local production of rocket fuel. There's plenty of uses in just being able to get the oxygen. What they do with the metal after that, they can figure that out when the time comes. Obviously, this is very early testing. This is brand new technology. 
and uh, is not ready to fly yet. But I know we here in the United States don't have plans on going back to the moon until 2024. And maybe in four years, they could have something a little bit better put together. I don't know. I've seen bigger advances in less time. Uh, I think on that, though, I am going to call it a video. Yeah, might as well. That's it for me. I'm going to call it a day. I want to thank everybody for stopping in. Let me know below what your favorite story was. If you want any more information on anything that I covered today, as always, links are in the description. Um, questions, comments, anything like that, go ahead. Feel free to add them in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this new uh, style I'm trying out. Um, I can't think of anything else to say except thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe if you haven't and just have fun and be safe. I'll see you on Wednesday.